Okay, so let's practice Cloud Formation by creating an S3 bucket. So creating an S3 bucket is free. And if you don't know Amazon S3, well, it is the AWS service that is used to store static files in a replicated and globally available way. S3 is the backbone of so many websites in the world. Uh, for example, single page applications, it will host all the Netflix video content, et cetera, et cetera. So in this exercise, we're going to use CloudFormation to provision an S3 bucket. That means that the S3 bucket will be part of a CloudFormation stack. And to do so, well, we have to write a CloudFormation template. So let's go and see how we can write it. So first, what you have to do is look at the documentation. So you type CloudFormation, S3 bucket, documentation. And this will take you to the AWS S3 bucket CloudFormation documentation page. And the reason why I'm showing you the documentation is that you will have, in the real world, a lot of time uh, have to look at the documentation. And so let's do it right now. So this is how to create an S3 bucket. You can look at the documentation. And there is an important caveat. You can only delete empty buckets. So we'll see this in this lecture as well, in this section as well. So we, now we look at the syntax. And you will always find the syntax in JSON form, as you can see. And if you scroll down in YAML full form, and we very much like YAML, so this is it. So you can see in the S3 buckets can have many properties of configuration. They're all right here. And you could be an S3 expert and know them all. But actually, if you scroll down on these properties and you look at each of them, you have some attributes. And if you look at, for example, accelerate configuration, uh, this gives you what this control. So this is the description of this property. Required, no. So that means that you do not have to specify it in a template. And then whether what is the type, so how to write it, and then something about update requires that we'll have a look at in a future section. So you can have a look at all the properties, but if you look at all the properties, you realize that they're all required, no, required, no, and so on and so on. So an S3 bucket is actually very simple. You don't need any properties to specify. So that makes it a very simple uh, CloudFormation template. So if we look at creating S3 bucket.yaml, the template looks as simple as this. So we have resources, so it's very important, and this is mandatory when you have a CloudFormation template, you have resources. And then we only have one resource in it, which is my S3 bucket. And the type of it is AWS S3 bucket, which this string right here represents the exact same thing as the string right here. So they're matching. So we're saying, hey, please create an S3 bucket called my S3 bucket. So this is the logical ID within my templates. And then properties, well, because we don't want to specify any properties, we need to pass in an empty object. And the way to do it in YAML is to pass in these open and closed accolades. So we have this, we have created this uh, very simple um, document, uh, CloudFormation templates. And now we are going to go into CloudFormation and create a stack. So in our case, the template is ready and we have to upload the template file. You choose the file, so you choose one, creating bucket.yaml. Then you click on next, you enter a stack name. So I'll call this one demo S3. We'll click on next because we have no parameters to define. I will scroll down and click on next again. Scroll down and click on next. Do not worry, by the end of this course, we'll be familiar with all these options, but right now we wanna keep it as simple as possible. So let's create this stack. And as you can see now, the create is in progress. So you can wait a little bit. You can also force a refresh of CloudFormation by clicking on the refresh button in here. So on the left-hand side, we see our stacks. On the right-hand side, when we click on the stack, we see a lot of tabs. One of them is events. And events tell you everything that is happening in the backend in AWS while the stack is being created. So if we look at this event right here, demo S3 is the name of my CloudFormation stack. It was user initiated. We are in create in progress. Then the logical idea of the next thing that was addressed by our CloudFormation template is my S3 bucket, also in create in progress. Then the event happened and now the resource creation was initiated. Now if I refresh again, we can see the create is complete of my logical ID. And therefore, because all my logical resources within my templates are created, then demo S3 also is in create complete state. So that's pretty interesting because we can go to resources and the resource tab shows you all the logical resources that have been created within my CloudFormation templates. And one of them obviously is my S3 bucket. And sometimes most of the resources will have a physical ID and you can click on it to be directly having a link to what was created. So this link takes us straight into the management console 
of Amazon S3, where I can see that my bucket was indeed created. Now, if we look at the bucket name, it is named Demo S3, my S3 bucket. So this is the name of the CloudFormation template. This is the name of the logical ID, and then some random bits of text. So when you do create uh, CloudFormation resources and their S3, and you don't specify a bucket name. So as you can see right here, there's a bucket name string. If you do not specify it, then you will get a random bucket name. But this is fine, right? So that's it for this lecture. Very simple. We looked at the documentation of S3 buckets. We looked at the bucket itself in the S3 console. And we looked at the CloudFormation console to also create our stack. So this is great. And in the next lecture, we'll go one step further and we will update our CloudFormation stack. So I will see you in the next lecture.